In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head in a live uh, weekend league gameplay. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become better Madden players. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you right now to click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe and like I said, it just allows you to be able to know whenever we release new videos that can help you get better at this game. Now, like I said, in this video, we are going to be breaking down some weekend league gameplay and I've uh, been trying to get uh, my team up to speed a little bit here. It has taken a little bit, but we're going to get rolling here. So my opponent is coming out in a little bunch tied in, so kind of some meta stuff. So going to be good to uh, show you how we defend this in weekend league. Um, again, thanks for watching this video. Nice little, nice little user pick right off the beginning. That's that three wreck. If people want to just sit and, and do stuff like that where they just run three rec, um, if you put a three rec out there, you normally have a pretty good shot at being able to be successful. So as you saw right there, we're able to get that uh, get that stop. Now uh, on offense, real quick, I'm doing some new abilities. I'm testing out some different things with the short and elite ability. Um, I think the short and elite ability might be one of the glitchier abilities. I've got a new quarterback. Um, I've been totally a Brett Favre guy. Um, I'm actually, you know, going to go ahead and use her. Um, and of course, we're starting off a little bit rocky. Um, but I'm going to be, I'm going to go ahead and, and try Robert Griffin out. You know, one of the things that I think is really, really hard whenever you have a good quarterback like an RG3 um, is to just continue to stay consistent uh, with your pocket presence. All right. It's really, really, really important. So anyways, right out there, just kind of getting going, getting something on the, on the board here. Not really looking too good to start this game, to be honest. Uh, third, that's going to bring up a third and 15. Now, in these situations, I actually really, really like this little tight end corner play. Uh, this is kind of my go-to play, you know, for a situation like this. We're going to see if we can hit this corner route. Um, Robert Griffin needs you to make an, a little bit of a nicer throw right there, and we're able to hit the completion. Now, if you want to get the exact offense and the exact defense that I am running in this game, uh, you can get that in the description of this video. It has everything in there, um, exactly what I do on defense, exactly what I do on offense. So if you want to get that, like I said, the, uh, the, the links are in the description for that. But honestly, the more that I play, the more that I really, really fall back in love with this bunch tight end offense. Um, I just think it's so simple to run, but at the same time, it's like really, really, really effective. And whenever you have like a RG3 type of quarterback, somebody that can roll out with the best of them, uh, I think it makes a big difference. So, anyways, I've also got Derrick Henry. I, I don't have the the latest addition to him. I'm just I just have the 98 overall uh, addition to him. I don't think I think he has like a golden ticket card or something. So I don't have that just yet. But uh, he still can do the air truck, as you can see right there. He's still a man child, and uh, we're just going to give him the ball. And really, all we're trying to do here um, is just kind of get our quarterback healthy. Um, you know, kind of give him a little bit of a breather. He took a couple big hits, hits back to back. So third down and two here. Uh, really, there's only one call for me, and that's the RPO trap alert bubble. Uh, I think that this is still one of the better ways to um, do something, you know, do some damage against this like three three five wide. And of course, he blows it up. So that's going to put us in a fourth down and two. Not exactly where I want to be uh, at all. And honestly, you know what? We're going to go ahead and play it a little bit smart. Uh, I think I, sh I, I I want to go for it. My knee-jerk reaction is to go for it. The reason I'm not going to do that is because I get ball at halftime. And so if I if I didn't get ball at halftime, I probably would go for that. But because I get ball at halftime, I'm not going to go for it. And uh, we're just going to go and get back and play some defense. It's kind of my plan. So um, it's been kind of a rocky start. We didn't get our roster set up at all. We end up kind of getting blessed with a pick. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be more to come from this gameplay. So, you know, kind of play it smart a little bit and just kind of slow the pace down just a little bit more. Um, as you can see there, almost got the recovery, but he did let that go, uh, go into the crowd. Now, uh, real quick, these are my coaching adjustments. I put it on play ball, and then I put it on to conservative right there. One of the things that I will say about Mutt, a lot of people you know, have been asking for Mutt gameplay, and so we're trying to get that to you guys. One of the things I will say 100% that I like more about Mutt is that it's just, I think it's honestly a little bit more consistent, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Like defensively, it is so much more consistent. There you see there's another interception. He's trying to throw stuff on the run without the right abilities. And my uh, my guy, Grant Delpit, one of the recent additions to my, my squad, 
um, ends up giving me a nice pick six. And so uh, the, the reason that I think, and I, I've heard, uh, I think I was listening to Wesley talk about this, but he said that Mutt is a little bit more of a defensive game at this point in the season. I would actually agree with that. Um, because it plays more, it's just more consistent. Um, because the ratings are so high, um, you can't, you don't get as many like just coverage glitching out type of situations that you would get if you were playing Reds or something like that. And so I actually appreciate that a lot about this. My defense has is like a thousand times better on Mutt than it is on Regs. Um, and that's primarily because of what I just said. You know, they just play a little bit better. That's just the bottom line. So uh, I've got some pretty good players, but at the same time, I don't have the best ever. Um, and here we go. So he looks like he is gonna go ahead and go down into the gun bunch. So I gotta be aware of that. Another thing that is different from Regs to Mutt is that in Mutt, I think that there's a lot better like rolling out type of situations. Um, right here, he's gonna throw it right into us again, almost through another pick. And he's got to be running the Eagles same team. Like I said, if you want to get my exact defense that I'm using in this in this gameplay, you can get it in the description. I love the 3-3-5 wide. I think the 3-3-5 wide has been the best defense uh, pretty much all season long. Uh, I just really, really, really believe in this defense. So right here, he's going to roll out. We're just going to try to hit him. One of the things that you can't do as much, and that's that's this right that's that right there is the biggest difference between regs and. Um, um, and uh, Mutt, right there, what you just saw. The fact that he can just really, really work the, the rollout game, I think is super, super huge. Now, I'm running Acrobats on all of my corners. I think I'm honestly going to go away from that. I just don't see it working uh, really well for me. Like, something like that, like, the, the route that he just threw, that's, like, the whole reason as to why I like to run Acrobats. I just think that, you know, they really haven't done me much of any favors. Now, this is something that I'm starting to do a little bit differently than I would do if I was playing regs. If I was playing regs, I would not um, be you know, very focused on keeping the quarterback in the pocket. But because I'm playing Mutt, I really like this new variation of the 3-3-5 wide cover four quarter defense that I've been running. Um, because of the spy, you see just how much smoother it really does. And there's another, you know, throw it into double coverage, but we're not going to get the interception. You know, that, that's kind of the frustrating part uh, for me. Normally in Mutt, you get those interceptions, but because all of the receivers are also really, really highly rated, what ends up happening is you, like, you don't, like, they can kind of, like, like that right there. Like, they, they can kind of make, like, random plays on the offensive side of the ball. And so, you know, that's one of the more frustrating things. Uh, here, we're going to send some pressure at him just to kind of force his – Force his hand a little bit, uh, just trying to really come at him. We got a lucky little deflection. And to be honest, I mean, he's kind of getting the raw end of the stick. If you actually think about, you know, everything that's happened, um, you know, he, 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 but I mean, we did drop a couple of interceptions on that drive. So I guess it evens out. But with, with the fact that you have like better receivers, you can pretty much um, always, like if you're throwing the ball to a receiver and you don't think they're going to be able to catch it, always, always, always just try to aggressive catch it. Just try. Right here, I'm just going to test him, and I'm able to get over the top of him. 17 nothing, exactly where I want to be in this game. Um, and, and as you can see, I mean, he's running 3-3-5 wide. He's running a bunch of tight We're basically running the same thing, but we're both having different levels of success. And that's because it's all about execution. It's all about simplifying. It's all about really getting down and in, in, into the weeds a little bit and doing everything with an actual purpose. We've ran the same defense every single play. We've ran the same offense at pretty much every single play, except for the, the exception of that third and long, we pretty much, and, and a couple runs here and there, you know, we've pretty much ran the same thing. Um, and it's forced, it's forced him to have to play a certain way. He hasn't adjusted to that way. And so uh, we've been able to have a little bit of success. Now, uh, right here, you know, this is one of those things See, I just don't like, I don't like where we ended up. Yep, good dot. And we got lucky. That was complete luck right there. Uh, when it rains, it pours a little bit. Right there is what you just saw. Now, I actually really, really like to, whenever someone runs under center, I love to use a rush. And, and I know it probably sounds like a little bit of a cliche. Maybe even sounds a little bit, you know, frustrating to you in the chat. If you if you haven't really learned the 3 through 5 wide defense, you say, well, why would you use a rush? Well, the thing is, like, if you actually think about it, yes, it's a glitch. I mean, it's not a glitch, but I mean, it kind of, I don't know. It's it's really not a glitch in my opinion. What it is, is you're just doing an effective tactic in the game and they're just not choosing, oh my gosh, are you playmaker a crossing route? Wow. 
Um, but here's the thing about user rushing and why I think it's so important. Because they're under center, right? Um, they're under center. You have to make them pay a little bit for that. They don't have their pass protection set up. So, and that's the beauty of the user rush right there. One of the things that I've actually also started doing that I didn't do before um, is I'm running a little bit more man coverage. I normally run just pretty much exclusively zone coverage. Uh, I'm actually shifted to running a little bit more man uh, right there. You got a bat. And see, you have to say, like, I mean, he's falling off his back foot trying to throw that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, why would he not miss that throw? Right here, I'm just gonna kind of like kind of plan to take that away a little bit. Throws it right into the three wreck. Pretty solid defense right there. I just knew he was gonna go ro roll out to his right, and that's the idea. Whenever you simplify what you do on defense, especially on defense, this is a difference in offense. Offense is a little bit different than defense, in my opinion. Um, but one of the major differences about offense um, or about defense, I apologize, and having a successful defense is the fact that, and there's a nice little user lurk. Um, is indeed the fact that you have to like set people up, you know, a little bit more on defense. And a lot of defense, honestly, this is just my opinion. A lot of defense, a lot of the, a lot of the things that comes back to defense, is that just forcing them to have to work a little bit, right? Not killing yourself, not overextending yourself so much to the point that like it's an easy, you know, easy one play score or something like that. That's one of the things that I think people forget about uh, defense in this game. And there's a nice little, uh, nice little delay fade. And we're going to actually move relatively quick, see if he does call burn a timeout. He is going to go ahead and burn a timeout. I like to stay a bunch tight end. I, I just, I pretty much will sit and bunch tight end as much as possible. Um, I've got this new way of running this uh, goal line, uh, goal line offense here. Um, I'm not sure if it's like the, the best way to run this, but this is just kind of my new thing. Uh, I actually really do like to do this. Um, we'll see. But just a little quick air trip. That's obviously there. But then you also have the corner route. You also have the – there's a lot of things that you have within that little red zone dot right there. So, you know, you want to have a specific – whenever you're playing offense, you want to have a specific passing play that you can capitalize on in the red zone. The red zone is indeed, um, in my opinion, one of the hardest places uh, to be able to be successful on both sides of the ball. I think it's hard to have success in the red zone on defense – just like it's hard to have success in the red zone on offense, very different type of it's a very different type of field that you get yourself into once you get inside the twenty yard line, but especially once you get inside the ten, um, the game is just different, and so you have to actually spend time labbing it. You have to spend time working on your red zone scheme. Uh, but anyways, okay, so uh, let's see. We're gonna go. He's going eye close. You got to think he's gonna do his little playmaker again. Throws right at Taylor Mays. Taylor Mays, unfortunately, didn't stop him. Um, okay. Uh, right here, a little quick snap. I'm going to just take that away myself. Dion should take that away. And see, that's what I'm talking about. So because the players are better, um, when he makes a bad throw, he just, like, aggressive catches it. And, like, it kind of screws me. Um, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I wanted to get – Shoot. Crosser, spied him, and good defense. Right now, the defense is playing pretty smooth. Um, nothing really, I mean, there's really been nothing there. I think he's had, he's had a, that open crossing route once, or no, two, two times. Um, here he's going to shift back into Bunch. And I actually have some decent defense for Bunch that I don't think people really realize that you can do. It's, um, it's a little bit different of a way to play it. And that see that's see that that's one of those plays where like I really want my acrobats to like make a play on the ball. Um, I have mid zone KO. I have flat zone KO and mid zone KO on my other guys here, uh, or my underneath. My linebackers have flat zone KO, and they have mid zone KO, and then all my corners have. Um, Oh, gosh, what do they have? They have Acrobat. Yeah. There you go. That's good defense. That's, you know, really, I'm starting to see, like, a kind of a common theme. Here he's just going to, like, try to run a play quick. See, like, I want Acrobat to make a play on that right there. Like, I know he's not, like, in man coverage against him, but he's close enough. Um, 
Let's see if he goes for this. Honestly, um, this is one of those things where you actually kind of hope they go for it because it might mean like a field goal or like at least a play for you. Just kind of put some pressure on him there, force him to have to work a little bit. And this is where you want to swat it. You always want to swat that. So now I've got the ball at midfield. I've got an opportunity. It's a little bit too far for a field goal, but at least I gave myself an opportunity to be able to score. Right, at least I gave myself an opportunity to be able to score. Um, okay, so right here, I'm actually gonna go to my tight end, and I know that that might be a little bit of an interesting move. If he runs cover three here on the left side, we should be okay. But I'm looking for my tight end, honestly. Um, and he actually got a really nice shed. He was in cover three too. Shoot, that was actually good defense by him. See, one of the things, and that's, you're seeing, like, the thing that we're really getting from this guy, from the way that he's playing his style, one of the things that we're learning is whenever you're, whenever you're in mutt, especially in mutt, because the linemen are so good, because you're running with, like, 99 uh, everywhere, right? Everyone, everyone pretty much has, you know, you know, a lot of the players on the field are at least 95 and higher at this point in the season, one of the things that it's really, really important to do, and this is why, I mean, you want to have a speedy quarterback, but you, you want to be careful at relying on his speed because you want to make sure that you are, you know, equipped to deal with it when they're getting these instant block sheds, when they're getting off the blocks, like, super, super easily. Um, so, and here we're just going to run with RG3. Now, that right there is really the benefit of RG3, I think, over... I mean, there's a couple of benefits to RG3, but one of the major ones, I think, is just his is just simply his ability uh, to be able to scramble out of the pocket, be able to you know make a little bit of a gain once he gets out of the pocket here. So uh, right here, and we're just going to run again with him. Now, you see he's taking a couple hits. He's probably a little bit tired, so we're going to sub in uh, Rich Gannon. I wish I would have... I wish I would just put... Um, the part of the reason I'm using Rich Gannon is just for his, uh, he gets like a, a nice chemistry boost to the Raiders. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the major reasons I'm using him. But right there, we're just kind of trying to get the first down. We'll probably run again. And uh, just trying to kind of keep everything simple. A little air truck. And we'll see if RG3 is, is uh, good to go. Yeah, he's good to go. Okay, cool. So, so anyway, so now we've, well, we've but, but again, you really have to be careful, I think, at putting yourself in a position where, you know, you, you, you can create it to where, I mean, like, like right here, you're going to see, we're just trying to set up some, you know, basic protection, but we're, our goal is to stay in the pocket. Um, our goal is to stay in the pocket here. Nice little dot. That right there, that animation right there drives me absolutely insane. It's not a consistent animation. It is the most random animation of all time, but it will like randomly lead to stuff like that. And it, it normally is a sign. Um, it's normally a sign that they're like playing, um, playing, um, oh gosh, not man coverage. Uh, they're playing cover three. So, you know, kind of one of the things that you have to, and see there's an automatic reception. One of the things you have to do, like as a bunch tight end run, like if you're going to run a lot of bunch tight end, I think it's really, really important that within the first little bit of the, like of the game, that you make it so that it is harder for them to run something like, you know, something like what he's going to try to do. So this is where inside switch really becomes, uh, I think, a, a critical play. And there we got a nice little throw out of sack. See, that's the thing that I don't like about RG3. His throwing release is a little bit, is, is actually significantly, um, significantly slower than, um, oh gosh, who is it? Uh, who, uh, Brett Favre. Okay, so right here, just trying to kind of keep it uh, simple. And we're not able to do so. Got a nice little dot right there. Unfortunately, we weren't able to complete it. But he's he's kind of one. Of the, he's in kind of that position where um, he's kind of decided that he's gonna send heavy heavy pressure every time. We're gonna go to our man beater. This is a this should be able to beat man pretty much every which way. Um, and there we go. Nice little wide open dot. 
to Isaac Bruce over the middle. And it looks like he is going to go ahead and quit out. If you want to get the exact offense and the exact defense that I ran in this, we're undefeated in Weekend League with this. You can get both of those guides in the description for just 15 bucks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.